Ugh, ads are such poop. Subscribe to ACAST Plus now to skip ads and more for just $1 a month. Click the link in our show notes to learn how. And hey, we're on Patreon too. Your support helps cover the cost of running a podcast. For $2 a month, you can get early access to all our episodes ad-free, plus bonus episodes exclusive to Patreon subscribers only. Visit patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse to sign up now. Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys. We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you know what we're doing today? Uh, yeah, we're doing more psalms. Yeah, I well, I wasn't sure if I should say, do you remember what happened yesterday? Because I mean, this is kind of a different uh, yeah. book and a different way of doing this This bit. I know. So I mean, I, I, we're still getting used to it a little bit. I know. Bit. I wasn't sure uh, how to start this, so. And there was some psalms, you know. There was, there some, was some psalms. There were some psalms, and now there's more psalms. Right. And, and they were probably not written by David. And they're like hymns and praises and lamentations and yeah, so songs or whatever and yeah, we don't really know how to properly. I don't know that we can really cover what we did yesterday in right. a good wrap up because it's just we're reading songs. They're they're kind of these are the feel good things for the the religious texts and like oh you know, God yeah, is yeah. great oh God is good. Right. There's not really oh, a story. Let us thank him there's for not, the food. There's not. There's not really a story to go. No, with, there's so not. It's not really easy to sum up. It's like a collection of poetry. Yeah. 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 So what are we? Uh, what are we going to cover today? Um, we are covering Psalms three, four, and five. We are still in Book One of Five of Psalms. Okay. Okay. All right. And. I'm going to do something a little bit different this time in that I'm combining my reading with not just the site that I use online, but with an actual physical Bible because, um, reasons, reasons. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into this and find out what those reasons are. Okie dokie. All right. All right, this is Psalm 3, and it has one of those titles that I referred to last time. Yeah. A Psalm of David when he fled from his son Absalom. Okay. Okay. Yep. So that's how it starts out. O Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. Selah. But you are a shield around me, O Lord. You bestow glory on me and lift up my head. To the Lord I cry aloud, and he answers me from his holy hill. Selah. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear the tens of thousands drawn up against me on every side. Arise, O Lord, deliver me, O my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. Selah. All right, what's up with Selah? Right. So that's why I wanted to read it from the book. Because um, the interpretation that we're reading online makes it easier to read. But it's missing those terms which are important. Interesting. Okay. And I'll get to those in a moment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Psalm 3 starts out, Lord, how they are... Increased? Incensed? (laughs) Increased. Oh, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Okay. Okay? Yeah. Although that's not exactly the interpretation that we get here. Right. Either. So, um, you see, I'm I'm reading from three different interpretations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? And so we've got three different ways of 
how this started. Sure. Okay. So this psalm is a personal thanksgiving to God who answered the prayer of an afflicted soul. Mm, and poor David. I'm going to get into those selahs in a minute, okay? Okay. It is attributed to David and relates in particular to the time when he fled from his son Absalom. Okay. As we remember, right? Right, right. Psalm 3 is the first psalm with a title. Remember, it had yeah. that beginning opening line that kind of tells you what's the what. Right. It was a psalm of David when he fled from his son Absalom. So it's got a title. Right, okay? yeah. It concerns a specific time of crisis in David's life. David fled Absalom because of a series of events that followed from David being under discipline for his own sins regarding Bathsheba and Uriah the Hittite. And that was all in 2 Samuel. Sure. Okay? Yeah. I kind of vaguely remember all that. Right, right, right. Yeah. In that light, the prayer is a model for looking to God for help. So this one is utilized a lot in churches. Okay. And he's asking for help even in the midst of God's chastisement. So he knows God's pissed at him, and even so, he's asking for help. For help, right. Yeah. And David prays, thy blessing is upon thy people. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's an evening and a morning that are seen as David lays down to sleep and wakes up protected and sustained by providence. So he's like, I'm being punished, things suck, but thank you for taking care of me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's both at the same time. I just want to point out here that um, the thing he's asking for is for God to help him kill his enemies. Right. Murder people. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just, that is correct. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Yeah. We're, we're so. tiptoeing around that, but <laughs> right, yes, that is right, correct. Yeah. So Absalom's advisor, Ahithophel, is personified as the mouth whom David asked God to break the teeth of. Mm, yeah. And in the account, Ahithophel's counsel is frustrated, and Ahithophel faces his demise. I barely even remember any of that. Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell right off the top of my head. But, I mean... I, I believe you that it happened. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> So David fleeing his son at the start of Psalm 3 is in direct contrast with the whole taking refuge in the son at the end of Psalm 2. So... These are all kind of related to each other. Got it. They are believed to be pieces of a larger whole. Okay. okay? All right. Which we kind of mentioned last time, but now we're kind of starting to see how they, they kind of go together. The Got patterns it. of them. Right. This is the first psalm that has the word or instruction, Selah. Yeah. Okay. And the final use of it at the very end indicates that Psalm 3 and Psalm 4 are tied together because we'll see the word Selah used in Psalm 4. Okay. Okay. Yep. Now, I had to look up the fuck is Selah. Right, right. Right. Obviously. Okay. It's a term that is used 74 times in the Bible. Damn. And it, yeah, that's a lot. Its etymology and precise meaning are unknown. Okay. Though there are various interpretations offered. Okay. Yeah. It's probably like a musical mark or instruction because a lot of these were set to music. Sure. So it would have been like stop and listen, stop playing the music for a minute. Got it. So like silence or something maybe? Yeah. But also it could have been that it was stop and listen to the music. So it could have been either music, stop, or it could have been, okay, stop singing and music, start. Got it. Got you it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we're not sure what it what it was. It, we assume it was a pause of some sort. Okay. It can also be interpreted as a form of underlining and preparation for the next paragraph. But I like the idea of the pause better. Yeah. Also, it should not be confused with the Hebrew word sela, S-E-L-A. This is the one we're using is S-E-L-A-H. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because... Sila without the H means rock. Got like, it. Like you are my rock, Sila. Sure. Um, that's a term I've heard used in churches um, vaguely. Like I didn't know what it meant, but now it makes sense. Sure. Okay. So um, that's what Sila is. Okay. Yeah. And again, those words and the instruction title at the beginning, those are not in the interpretation I'm reading from online. And that's why I wanted to read it from the actual book. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, the word, I mean, like I'm looking at it right now and the word Sila is off to the side, almost like as, mm-hmm. an, as, as an aside to the actual yeah. text itself. So. Yeah, they're not, the words are not actually, also the instruction, you'll notice, I don't know if, if you're looking at it, darling, dear husband, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have a verse number next to it, right. a Psalm of David, but in some Bibles it does. Hmm. So sometimes that instruction is verse one. Sometimes that instruction is included with the first line as verse one. Got it. And other times as it appears in the Bible that I'm holding in my hands. Just it's, like a title. It's just a title or an instruction off right, to itself. Right. Okay. So I just wanted to include all of that, that sometimes we're going to be missing stuff when we read it because we're only mm-hmm. reading from one sure. piece. but. I felt like it was a little bit important to get into how it actually looks like on the page. Sure. Yeah. So that's why I pulled out my old Bible. Yeah. Just once again, he pointed out he mm-hmm. was asking for his enemies to be, you know, murdered. Yes. Yes. So. Beautiful poetry about please kill him. So David spent more years fleeing Saul as a young man than he spent fleeing his son Absalom. Yeah. And he wrote many psalms that we find later in the book of Psalms regarding situations where he was being pursued by Saul. Yeah, okay. But here is one of the opening songs in the book of Psalms, and it's about the painful experience of fleeing from his own son. Got it. Okay? Got it. So that's what this one was about. I wonder if there's a psalm about when uh, David was in the cave and he was watching watching him pee. (laughs) That would be That'd funny. Be funny. Yeah. I, I they, should, could, they should totally have a psalm for that. We should write a psalm right? for watching him pee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so now we are moving on to Psalm 4, okay? Okay. And I am going to, again, read from the page instead of the site, uh, website. Yeah, Okay. got it. All right, because this one, too, has an instruction or a title at the beginning. For the director of music with stringed instruments, a psalm of David. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yep. Answer me when I call to you, O my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. How long, O men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Selah. Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. In your anger, do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Selah. Offer right sacrifices and trust in the Lord. Many are asking, who can show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have filled my heart with greater joy than when their grain and new wine abound. I will lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Okay. 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 So So that's, um, yeah. That's Psalm 4. That's Psalm 4. And, you know, that one, Mm -hmm. it struck me with the beginning of that, that people like to tell God to hear them. Mm -hmm. Like, that just kind of goes counter to the way... It actually goes right. because you can't demand anything of the dude. Yeah. He does not so like true. that. He he really don't, do he? No. <laughs> so this one starts out, hear me when I call, O God, O God of my righteousness. Right, yeah. Okay, which again is a little bit different from um, what we just read. Sure. And this psalm is traditionally attributed to David, but his authorship is not accepted by modern scholars, yada, yada, yada. It was written hundreds of years later. Right. (laughs) The message in the psalm is that the victories of sinners are only temporary and only repentance can bring true happiness. Mm. The psalm's text is a reflection of David speaking to all sinners while addressing himself to Absalom. The message in the psalm is that the victories of sinners are only temporary and meaningless, and only repentance can bring true happiness. Why? What? I I still struggle with why God would allow sinners Mm -hmm. to have even temporary victories. Right. It doesn't make any fucking sense. It really doesn't. You know, I mean, it's why? 
What's the purpose of it all? What's the purpose? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you have somebody who's not godly going against somebody who is godless, Mm -hmm. maybe you're teaching that person that's not godly a lesson so that they become godly, right? You could you could maybe pitch it that way, I suppose. Or maybe you're teaching the godless person um, to have God. Maybe, sure, but it doesn't come across that way in the Bible. No, it really doesn't. So I don't I don't believe that. I don't believe and it, it, and I well, don't get it. Yeah, it, it just doesn't it doesn't ring true to the way that the Bible is read, right. at least thus far. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I this reminds me. This conversation reminds me. Um, I was sitting with my dad a couple of days ago and um, he is like hardcore Christian. Yeah, right. And he was telling me he understands that to somebody who is not saved and who is not into the Bible and all that, that everything in it probably sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to ask him, but I didn't want his answer because I yeah. knew that there was no good answer. Right. I wanted to ask him if you acknowledge that it sounds like gobbledygook, yeah. then how does one come to believe in gobbledygook? Well, I can tell you how. Your pastor tells you how. Your your prayer group t- tells you how. Your prayer book tells you how. The memes you read on your group of people that you're friends with on Facebook tell you how. That's how. They don't learn this stuff from the Bible. They're not actually reading the Bible the way we're reading the Bible, because if you did, you wouldn't believe this shit. Right. It's not believable. Right. I just, I, I didn't understand how he's like, well, I get it and you don't, you know what I mean? Like, how is that supposed to quote unquote, save my soul or bring me closer to God or help me, you know, figure out my, my path. You know, you know I, if I, I could get it, if I could trust that the conversation was going to be a very respectful and two way conversation mm-hmm. with your dad about religion, I would love to have a conversation with him about what we've learned so far versus what he thinks he knows. Right. You know, I mean, and I'm not trying to criticize what I, what he thinks he knows. I'm genuinely curious how he comes to the conclusions where, you know, certain things in the society are bad and wrong versus what I've read and how I interpret this stuff. Right. You know, it, right. it, I would love to have that conversation and find out where we're not hitting here, where we're not, where we're not meshing because. But the problem is you would be somebody who has Satan's words in your mouth. Right, right. And he knows better. And that's where the conversation stops. How do you have but a conversation? But the problem is he can't explain why. But he doesn't need to explain because you're a heathen. Right, right. That's you, great. You're not a believer. He no, doesn't and, need to explain And that's it to anytime you. the conversation devolves into, you know, why you can't take my word on it or our word on it as atheists, it always comes back to you're not a believer. You just don't get it. Right. And it's like that. That's not that's not a good enough answer. It's not a good enough answer for me, but it's not ever going to. It, there's never going to be a time when we can agree to disagree but walk away still respecting the other and saying, well, we just have a difference of opinion. You know what I mean? Yeah. We will agree to disagree, but each think the other is a complete fucking moron at best or, you know, whose soul is going to be burning in an eternal hell at worst. Right, right. Well, I mean, I also, I, I honestly would like to debate his pastor, you know, like the guy that he listens to online because I don't think they know a lot either. I don't either. I, I really don't have a lot of faith in the people that teach these things to people because I think they're pitching something that gets them a lot of money, mm-hmm. that makes them a lot of money, and that, yeah. that gets the message that they want put across. And it's a right-wing, you know, nationalist yes. agenda that they've got going on. So. I, I will say I totally 100% believe you. I've not checked it out myself. I know you have. Right. But I do know that my parents have experimented with vaguely veiled, thinly veiled racist terms that they never would have dreamed even hinting at in the past. Right. They've become more racist than what I grew up with. And it blows my mind that they don't see it. I I don't get it. Yeah. I'm just like, how... Oh, we were sitting there today and my dad referred to... 
That little oriental girl. That's, so That's really how he referred to this person. I feel like if you encapsulate this stuff within religion, right? Mm-hmm. It, it takes the edge off for people and makes it okay. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, this is, this is what's happening. Part of this, this divide in this country that's happening, in my opinion, is that right-wing media and Christianity in general are, mm-hmm. are allowing for these ideas to be okay. Yes. You know? And they're mainstreaming it a little bit at a time. And they're normalizing racism. Definitely. Definitely. It's disgusting. It is. And it's affecting families and people just like us. You know, yes. like, I mean, it's affecting us because we have to deal with it with your parents. Yeah. So. I mean, we have a trans child. Meanwhile, my mom is posting anti-trans shit on her Facebook. Yeah. And my kid has to see that. And then we have to go to their house. No, okay, we don't have to go to their house. But if we want to maintain any kind of relationship with my parents, which we do, for better or for worse, we do. If we want to maintain any kind of relationship with them, we have to go to their house and pretend that we don't know that they feel this way. While they pretend that they don't to our face. Right. And we have to know that in their back room... They're thinking these things. Well, and and again, this doesn't make it better, but to be fair to them, they have respected what we ask them not to do, generally speaking, in front of us when we're there. Generally, but they still don't use our child's pronouns. And Sometimes they do. Not, as, not, not enough. Not nearly enough. Not anymore they don't. Well, because now there's a much larger push against trans people. Yeah. Yeah. So they do not use our child's. They did for like six months. They kind of vaguely tried now, like they would catch themselves. Right, right. And they honestly seemed like they were making the effort. Right. And I was really proud of them. Yeah. Uh, small victories, you guys. Right. And now they, on purpose, do not try because now they are posting anti trans stuff. Right. So. I've watched just in the last year, my parents go from somebody who might eventually come around to, nope, just kidding, just kidding, the right got him. Anti-trans is all the rage now, don't you know? Yeah. It wasn't a year ago as much. Right. But did you hear the, um, there is a travel advisory in Florida, um, do not come there if you are a person of color If you belong to the LGBTQ community, um, I forget, there's there's a couple other things. But basically, if you are not a straight, white, Christian male, you probably should avoid Florida. Yeah. There's a travel advisory for Florida. I mean, you should probably have the same travel advisory for most of the Bible Belt. but Yes, but Florida in particular, because their governor is a son of a fucking bitch. Oh, he really is. He really is. Yeah. If anybody deserved a prayer for him to get his teeth knocked in, it's that guy. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. We got off on a rant. Let's get back to what we were talking about, which was, wait, uh, one, two. This is four. Yes. Four. Psalm four. Yeah. Okay. So this was a request to God for deliverance from past distresses. And it's the first psalm with a musical instrument, specifically strings, mentioned in the title. Yeah. And when I read that, that is when I decided, oh, hold on a sec. I did not see that in my right, website. Right, let me check the, the Bible Bible. The Yeah, a physical copy. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't see no fucking strings. Right. So, and I was like, wait, I didn't even see a fucking title. What the hell are you talking about? Right. So these extra lines are missing from the website that I'm using. Okay. So, sorry, I just wanted to repeat that. Sure. Um, there's also a sila ending the previous Psalm, Psalm 3. Yeah. And I did mention that, but, you know, the fact that there's another one in this very next psalm is what kind of makes people wonder if they weren't part of a larger together. There's no agreement, as I already said, on what Selah means. And um, we've already mentioned before that it might mean a pause, a reflection, something to that effect. Sure. Okay. And uh, many see some kind of structure in the layout of the psalm. I did not really fully understand what they were getting at, but something about the repetition of the wording um, 
makes it come across as some kind of musical in nature or whatever or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I wasn't really following all that because I'm not a wordy smart person. Sure. All right, Psalm 5. Let us go to Psalm 5. Yeah. Okay, this one starts for the director of music for flutes, a psalm for David. Damn. Yeah. Flutes now, huh? Instructions and shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Get them flutes out. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my sighing. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. You are not a God who takes pleasure in evil. Mm, well. <laughs> With you, the wicked cannot dwell. Well, yeah. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. <laughs> you hate all who do wrong. I don't think no, a God should hate. I don't think hate. he cares that much. I don't think it's proper for a God to hate yeah, anything. That's, that's, yeah. That sounds more like a human emotion to right, me. Right, right. You destroy those who tell lies. But he doesn't, he though, doesn't. because he had his own angel guys go out and tell lies. Right, he even had the guys in Job that were lying yeah. about what, the, what he would have said. Yeah. And they didn't, he didn't destroy them. They just had to offer a prayer, and they're good. Yeah, I'm so sorry that I'm tearing this psalm apart no, as I'm right. reading yeah, it, yeah. but it's bullshit. Right. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men the Lord abhors. Mm. Sure. But I, by your great mercy will come into your house. In reverence will I bow down toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make straight your way before me. Okay. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with destruction. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongue they speak deceit. Mm. Mm. Declare them guilty, O God. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. <laughs> Go get them. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. La, la, la. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Mm. For surely, O oh Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. I mean, there's a lot of like just you know blessing and and good things happening to the righteous people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and bad things happening to the bad people. Yeah. In these psalms so far. Yeah. It's very like judgy. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I don't like it. I don't like the mm -hmm. tone. It's not good. No, and no. I, it doesn't it doesn't really fit. It doesn't fit. No. Like God doesn't really give a fuck whether you pray to him or not. It doesn't seem like, like, right. and he only gets mad if you fuck up really bad, right? And, and or even, or sometimes not at all, like or sometimes, sometimes you know whatever. Fucking, you picked up sticks on yeah, the wrong day. Yeah, it just it, it doesn't. Even in David's in the book of David, like when we were reading about David, mm -hmm. it, it didn't. There wasn't really a lot of consistency of how his judgments and his, right. his, everything was divvied up. You know, no, how he treated people. Right, I didn't. I don't it know. was very willy nilly. Like I'm in a shitty mood today, and even though it's just sticks and it doesn't fucking matter, you're dead. Right. I mean, that was from earlier. That was back during Moses. But I mean, even I don't know. In, during David, it didn't feel like he was talking to God all that much directly. And yeah, and this feels very. The, the Psalms feel very personal. Like you're you're speaking to God. Like it feels mm -hmm. like you're speaking to God and asking. Him for personal favors. Yeah. And, of course, God's going to grant them because, you know, you're righteous and, and they're wicked. Yeah. And that's, that's like the whole tone so far. Of course you will. But it just, it doesn't mesh with what we've read, really. Right. Well, I mean, that is part of why scholars are able to tell that it wasn't written at the same time. It right. wasn't written by the same authors. The, the, the God of the Old Testament thus far has been much more willy-nilly in his uh, judgment and yeah. his practice of smiting and 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 giving favors you yeah know? yeah so i i just don't i don't truck with this no it's too much it's over the top it is over the top this psalm you may be surprised to learn is traditionally attributed to david uh, yeah 
It's a reflection of how the righteous man prays for deliverance, not only for freedom from suffering, but to allow himself to be able to serve God without distraction. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you can't be doing it without distraction. Right, like okay? a naked woman bathing over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not your fault. Yeah. Your, your dick goes and it just points that way. Right. What, what yeah. you going to do? Right. You know? So the New King James Version entitles this one, A Prayer for Guidance. Mm -hmm. thought that was interesting to know. Okay. Psalm 5 is within the genre of the morning prayer, as the morning was very important in the religions of the ancient Near East. Hmm. The psalm opens as a lament, continues with praise, and requests that God punish evildoers. So it's yeah. a, everything sucks, but you're awesome. Can you punish the bad guys, please? Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't like all the punishment. I think it's all bullshit. Right, right. So, the psalm especially is, the asking for it. Like you're yeah. asking for somebody to be hurt and, yeah. and and you're asking your God to hurt somebody. Yeah. That is, that is mean. I, I'm a person who doesn't really, that's not to say if something happened to me personally or someone that I love personally, I wouldn't want the death penalty. But as I view the death penalty, I don't want it to exist. Right. So you're talking to someone who's an atheist, doesn't believe in God, who has more empathy, apparently, than anybody from this fucking religion. Right. For people in general. Right. Now, I have my reasons for that, and I have my reasons that I believe that, but, like, these people are mean-spirited. They're fucking horrible. Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Yeah, I don't either. Because I'm not saying that I'm a person who prays, but... If I were, I'm a person who asks for a asks for the ability to survive better or to endure better the hardships. Yeah. Like I feel like it's even too much to ask for the hardship not to happen. Shit's gonna happen. Sure. Right? Yeah. You're you're gonna get cancer or not. You're gonna get into a car accident or not. Right, right? right. Like I'm not gonna ask, can please the universe bend its rays for me and make shit happen or not happen to benefit me. The only thing that I would ask is please can I just have the grace to handle things in a decent fashion. Right. Let, let me not panic in the face of danger. Let me let me be brave to be able to um help take care of my family if if that need should arise. And Let if that's me... all God was was seeking guidance on on how to navigate situations in your life, mm-hmm. I'd be a lot more down with the philosophies maybe right. if it was just seeking guidance on how to handle things. Yeah. And not asking for retribution and things like that. The, you know? And that's that's the thing. This God, like you're asking for stuff outside of yourself. And that's selfish. I'm asking for stuff inside of myself. I want to be a better person. Help me be nicer. Help right. me be kinder. Help me be the best me possible. Right. Like my prayers as they as such as they may be mm-hmm. are not about other people and situations outside of myself. Right. And I think that's the problem. Right. Right. That's the problem with this whole fucking religion. Yeah. That I I don't want anything to do with a religion where I'm asking God, can you please save my child? Can you please get them out of this predicament? Can you please make me not have this miscarriage? Can you please make me not? Well, be and they raped? make people think that these things are possible. Yeah, like you can affect change somehow the power through prayer. Of prayer. And oh, it's just—it's such a fucking mind screw. No, when I went through a miscarriage, I didn't ask, "Can this please not have happened?" I asked. How can I handle this? How can I ever deal with this? You know, I was asking, please let me have the strength to keep going. Like, right, how do right. I live after this when I've already got a child? Let me just be okay. Yeah. Let me not be depressed. You know? Right. That right. kind of thing. I just, I don't get like saying, hey, kill the son of a bitch over there that cut me off in traffic. <laughs> right. You know, right. that like, wow, that escalated fucking quickly. But that feels like where we're going in this society is yes. that we're, we're literally asking for people. People are literally asking for God to punish people that they don't like. Yeah. You know, like, and I don't like that that guy asked me to turn down my music. So I'm going to go over and shoot them. I mean, right? it kind of feels that way. Like that's well, no, that actually, I ripped that from the headlines. Yeah, that right, happened. Right. Okay, but that's exactly like, oh well, God would have done it. I just went ahead and did it for him. Yeah, right. 
you right. know, because killing people, sure, why not? Right. It's in the Bible. We ask God to kill people for us. Why not just go ahead and pick up all those guns and do it my goddamn self? True. Yeah. No, I mean, don't, don't do don't that. Do don't, that don't, don't do that, guys. Yeah. Don't do that. But, um, yeah, so that was uh, Psalms chapters 3, 4, and 5. Sure as fuck was. And uh, and tomorrow we'll be back. Wait, wait, what is today? Today is, okay, yeah. Tomorrow we'll be back with. <laughs> Psalms 6, 7, and 8. You okay um, there? And I mean, I'm getting over my sickness, so, you know. What is the day? I, I don't know. What is time? This I is don't t- even know. This is coming out on Tuesday. Okay, so, yes. so then, yeah, okay. All right, we'll see you guys then. Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. Jesus Christ. Bye. Bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh, my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Oh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.